Coach Andersey, Kent State Wrestling Talk, episode number seven. Uh, dual meet yesterday that we were able to, I was able to get to, was your Clarion dual meet. Uh, you guys did not, were not at full strength yesterday versus Clarion, and you guys are doing some lineup shifts. <laughs> to say the least. To say the least, there's a lot going on right now in Kent State Wrestling. Um, you lost some guys. There's some injuries. There's a whole lot going on. Walk us through the eight to two duel yesterday with Clarion, and I'll, we'll work our way back to the Virginia duels. Well, you want me to talk about who's missing and what's going on first, or you want me to talk about just the match yesterday? Well, talk, first off, you weren't at full strength. One thirty three, at one thirty three, you did not have uh, your transfer starter, the Illyria kid with uh, Fenton, and uh, you had a guy in there I've never even heard of, a Pennsylvania guy, right? Yeah, so we had Jacob Hupp wrestling at 133. Wrestled hard, very yep. hard, and lost a 10-9 match. Yep. He's a true freshman. He's a 25-pounder. He'll be our starting 25-pounder most likely next year. Okay. He, you know, that the I'll be honest, the, the, the new rule this year where freshmen can get five matches, our really good recruits that we had come in last year are all going to get their five matches just because of how many injuries we had. So – that was Jacob Hupp. He wrestled at, at uh, 133. He's a 125 pounder. He's wrestled 125 all year. Um, he's the next best 133. Fenton is no longer on our team. He's decided that he just doesn't want to do this. And he had some injuries this year and things weren't going very well. And at the end of the day, I, you know, I think we all felt that it was better for him just to leave the team than it would be to stay and, you know, half-ass some things. I guess you could say that. But like I said, we didn't leave, we didn't leave on bad terms. He, uh, he just, he's beat, he's beat up. It's been a rough patch for him. And um, at the end of the day, we're, we're now Lewis Noel, which is normally our 141 pounder. You know, him and, him and Benton were like best buddies. He came to Kent State because they both were at Pittsburgh. Fenton transferred. He transferred the semester later. So he was really a 33 pounder, but he always went 141 because Fenton was there. Now that Fenton is gone, he's trying to make his, descent to 133 so he wrestled 141 and made the weight back at uh virginia duels and because of the way the ncaa sets it up he cannot officially make 133 until cleveland state so he'll be going he'll be coming turning into our new new 133 pounder so his descent plan only allows him so much of his body percent fat to go down him and fenton came in together from pit friends and then one guy leaves the team and a, with Fenton leaving the team, um, he is a, he's a super explosive guy. And when you're a guy like that who's beat down and beat up, that's hard to, it's really hard to wrestle, man. Yep. I don't think people really understand how hard the sport is. It's so hard. I mean, it is the hardest thing ever. And, and that's not easy for a guy like to do, to do, you know, that guy's been doing this his whole life. Yeah. This is tough, man. I don't think people really understand how tough Division One athletics is. And that guy's been, at an ACC school, now a Mac school, it's just such a tough thing. He's a two-time state champ for Eric Burnett. All the best to him, though, right? I mean, you guys get yeah. on bad terms, and sometimes wrestling doesn't go your way, and I understand that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like I said, it wasn't on bad terms. All we we had a discussion. You know, I just asked him. Actually, I had asked him why is it, why why are you doing this anymore? It doesn't look like you really want to be here. And you know, we got a lot of young guys on. We got about twenty new guys on our team. So if you have a guy that isn't giving his all every day, he's just showing young guys bad habits and it was a really hard to hard conversation i had with him and ultimately you know he just he goes yeah i just i'm not really into it and i'm like well then you know is this really is this do you want to do it throughout the rest of the semester and he goes you know i guess i was doing it for the scholarship and those are the wrong reasons to do it and ultimately i let him keep the scholarship and and he's going to graduate this year and you know he'll get his single he'll get his frame singlet and ultimately it, it probably made our team a little bit better that he left because now he you know now it's one less guy not going 100% in our room, which you need, especially when you have young guys. And it's hard, you. but it's hard to go 100% when you're an explosive guy and it's just yeah. not there. You're reaching yeah. for the gas pedal and it's not there. I think that's just a tough thing, man. Yeah. This yeah. sport is so hard and it's humbling. And sometimes those things happen and they're for the better. And the guy's going to graduate. He ultimately is going to get out of it what we want everybody to get out of. It. He's going to graduate yeah, but, with a degree. And, and I, I yeah. listen, I call that a win. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> People could be mad at me. I call that a win. You know, I it just, is. He, he, he's a good kid. He'll be, he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll be successful, whatever he does. Yeah. But I think the, the biggest thing here is Lewis Noel, you know, if you look at 
the first rankings out. Everyone knows what you know how this works. You gotta you gotta get to the national tournament at one thirty three. You gotta win the Mac, you gotta win the Mac tournament to win it. Lewis Noel says I can win it. He, he looked over the you know, after Ben quit. He, he comes back. He goes. I think I can win one thirty three. Can I go one thirty three? And we all looked at each other and said, Yeah, you can go one thirty three. You know, so he's going to get one match this weekend. We're thinking he's going to probably wrestle against uh, Central Michigan, not OU, just Central Michigan. Um, and he's gonna, that's going to be his match in the following week. He'll wrestle with Cleveland State. But the reason why he's going to 133 is that he believes he can win the tournament, which Ferry didn't have the best match yesterday. And it's usually, if you always look, every year he has a match in the middle middle somewhere where it's just like a, almost like a, like it's a, I don't want to call it a, it's just, it was just a bad match, you know, and, and and he didn't wrestle the best yesterday. Didn't make, didn't wrestle anything like he normally does with how he attacks and how he goes at guys. Um, but you know, he's still he's still a two three guy in the conference, a one two three guy in the conference. He's given Noto the best match in the conference in the last year, and that was at the MAC tournament in the semis. Um, so Ferry has the ability to go and win, win the tournament. Noel thinks he can win it. I, 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 Enrique has not wrestled well. Hopefully, he can get his magic back, and he's the guy. Cody's doing really well. Um, we got a one fifty seven pounder that. I wouldn't want to have to wrestle if I was anybody because he's just a young guy and doesn't know any better. and just goes really, really hard. So we got guys, I think, regardless of what our record is, I think we're, I think that the tournament will do much better than what our record is. I really do. I believe that full heartedly. So Nap yesterday, uh, he's got a gas pedal that I don't think he understands. He's got like no governor. He's got no cruise control at all. He just wrestles till the tam- tank's empty. He put 13 points on the board. Um, you know, Clarion guy came after and they wrestled hard and it was a great match. And, you know, to put 13 points on the board as a freshman, true freshman, true freshman is like that, that guy wrestles hard. I like that guy. And that, that's, that, that, that's a good, that's a good weight in the Mac. There's going to be more than just the champs going to make it. There's going to be yep. some bids brought. So I, I like that guy to maybe steal a bid or if he can win a couple matches here down the stretch versus OU and central, maybe he brings a bid. You never know, man. Yeah, and he, he he against Southern or Southern Illinois Edwards, he scored eleven points. Yeah, he wrestled he wrestled a guy from Buffalo who's one or two in the conference, and I want to say it was a ten to nine match. So he scores points. There's some, like you said, every match he learns, every match he gets better. He's a really exciting kid to have on your team, and it was kind of like just kind of fell upon us as far as the, how we recruited him and kind of caught him on the back end of things. We 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 had him up for an early visit, didn't really do a whole lot. Then about April, we, we made him an offer and he decided to come. And it's been, it's been an, probably the sleeper find that we've had in a long time that I'm, we're really excited about. He's, he's a good kid. He, he, he wrestles hard. <laughs> a diamond in the rough, I'd like to say. Yep, I agree with you. I agree with you. And that's a guy, like, if you think about it, he's 20, minute from, he's 20 minutes from that Cavalli Center, he told me. Yep. Where you guys wrestled that dual meet where he was the only guy that won. Yep. That he's 20 minutes from his home, right? Like, yeah. That for that guy to come to you, that's hard to get a guy like Cover. Those guys can go be walk-ons at Ohio State and be career backups, but they want to take a chance and be guys who can make the national tournament for Kent State. I like that. I like that yeah. a lot. Uh, Cover had some fight, man. Cover surged at the end yesterday, but lost a tight match. Yeah, Cover. Cover's one of those guys that just needs to get through that first carry without giving. He got four points in the first carry. It was four to two, and it just—it's almost like an uphill climb because he's in really good shape. He just has to learn how not to give up points in the first period. And that's his biggest, his biggest downfall. After the match, you know, he said, he goes, Coach, I just, I need some help. I, goes, I need some, some mental help just getting through some of these, like, his first period, I don't remember it. And he goes, all he knows, I'm down four to one, and then I'm starting to wrestle better. And, I'm, and I go, Cover, you're a really smart kid. If that's what you think that, that you, know, you need, then we have all kinds of things at our university to, to get him. You know, sports psychologist type of thing that maybe can help him get to that next level so his first period's a little bit better. Same yeah. thing happened at Buffalo for him that, that he had. Um, just didn't have a very good period, first period and came back and scored some points and and uh, made it close, but just gives up too many points in the first period. And, and he's always trying to catch up, but he's in great – another guy's in great shape, goes really hard. Um, at the end of the day, he's going to have a master's degree. He already has a teaching job lined up for him. Great kid to have on the team, team leader. Just, you know, we – listen, I'll tell anyone this. And I, I had a meet with, with, with uh, my boss today. And I do, I meet with her every Monday and she goes here, she goes, right now you guys aren't wrestling the best because you, she goes, you're, your wrestling team does a lot of things really, really well. And I go, I know we do it. And, you know, we always want to wrestle better, but there's things that nobody knows about that we do really, really well. And, and he's a, he's a perfect example of that. Nap. Nap's a young guy that naps like a, a young version of Cover. Would you say that as far as a student and a person? 
Yep, just but, but much better wrestler. That's all. And that's nothing against Cobra. Just that, that I want to say he made it to the finals last year. State tournament took no. Second. He got Love. screwed. He in got hosed in the semis versus Winton yeah. versus Denkins. Yep. That was wild. You got to watch that. I got to send you that match. Yeah, you sent me the wrong match. Oh, yeah. I must have sent you the wrong match because yeah. I felt like he got a hose job. And I mean, you know me, I'm a, I'm a Burnett Homer, man. That's one of Burnett's <laughs> guys. I like those guys. And that's yeah. hard, you know. Hold on. So we all know I'm a Kent State Homer. Everybody knows that. Keith Ferraro yeah. knows that. Clarion knows that. I got to say, I feel like Cody Camaro gave up a, a, a six point move yesterday that didn't get called. Well, you know, at least I, I don't pick the referees. I don't know. It's not point. what I'm saying. Hold on. It's not a ref thing. I'm not calling the ref out. I just feel like the danger rule was implemented, and I don't feel like it got applied correctly yesterday. And that my, my criteria for that was he put him in danger. But I think the only thing that Cody had is he had a high bridge, and it's almost like his head wasn't even on the mat. The guy had his, his head trapped. And I yep. think you got to be within a certain, I'm sure I could get the, the rule book and find out if you're over 18 inches from the mat, yep. something crazy. It's, it's, it's something like 12 to 18 inches from the mat. They won't call near fall criteria. That's but, the only thing I could think of why that wasn't a six point move. I agree with you hundred percent. The only thing I will say is if you're officiating the right way and you start to count. And you know, I think Cody's been doing this long enough. He's wild. What's that? He's wily. He's a game he, veteran. Yeah, he would have bellied out and given up two if he would have heard, but the guy wasn't counting. So at the end of the day, they didn't throw the brick. You know, this is something that you, they could have thrown the brick. They didn't throw the brick all turn no, all match. They, they did. They threw the brick. They threw the brick. It got reviewed. Okay, I didn't know. I thought it he got reviewed. reviewed. Okay, I know. I know. It got reviewed. I thought the ref went and reviewed it. No, they threw the brick. Cause I got okay. a perfect angle. The Clarion <laughs> coaches are losing their minds. They were losing Another their mind. thing, I couldn't believe how much you guys were all out on the mat. I, there should have been seven control of mat calls yesterday. It wasn't You're me. on the mat. Clarion was, is on the mat a lot more than you, but I wasn't on the mat because I could. I I, I got a bad hip. I barely got up. I only got. You up were on hand. the mat once. They were on the mat seven times. Yeah, they were. They were on the mat a lot, but I didn't get up as many times as they did. I know that for a fact. Okay, so <laughs> Cody's Wiley wins that match. I just feel like that's just me, dude. And I'm a, I'm a fair is fair guy, though. I will say yeah. that I'm I'm fair fair is fair. Cody Kamara is one of my guys. He rented from me. I love the guy. The guy's everything Kent State Wrestling's about. Yeah, I love the dude. I mean, I'm not sitting here. It would be like, I, even if my nephew's got a bad call against the, uh, that went for them, I would call it like I saw it. But at the end of the day, though, I think that. I mean, Cody talked about it. He would have bailed out and just given up two if he had to, if, if it, the count went to. He was listening. He was like, I heard him counting. I was getting ready to bail. He, he counted one, one, two one counts. Yeah, he goes, he goes, I never heard two and everything. So I just hung in there. And next thing you know, I knew it was a stalemate, wasn't it? Oh, end of the period. End of the period. Okay. But like at some point, he goes, I was ready to bail out. He goes, I just didn't want to bail out until I heard that, until I heard danger, you know, three. And he goes, I never yeah. heard it. So I didn't worry about it. So yeah, I he did, never. He counted two danger call, yeah. two danger ones. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, yeah. I, I, look, I, I, that guy knows 50 th million times more about the rule book than me. So I, I'm not going to throw stones. And he's a Northwest Ohio guy. So shout out to Northwest Ohio guys. Okay. Let's go. You lose eight matches to two. Wait, why are you laughing at? You're laughing at me. Yeah. I'm just laughing. Yeah. Like, we, okay. So yesterday we, we had, we had five true freshman wrestling. Um, Enrique was in the lineup. Um, Noel was in the lineup. Uh, Bates was in the lineup. Michael Fair was in the lineup. So we just kind of a hodgepodge lineup, just trying to get everyone healthy. We are hoping, not hoping, I would assume that we're going to be really close this weekend. Everyone's going to be in our lineup this weekend, except for the 141 situation. So on, uh, on OU, we're probably going to go with a, a combination of Matt Ellis at um, 133. And then the, Matt Ellis took second to state last year. Um, or and then Pablo at 141, Castro. Okay. The Louisville guy, right? Louisville guy. And then we'll come back against Central Michigan. Lou, even though he's gonna have to weigh 130, he's gonna have to weigh like 134.1. He's gonna wrestle 141 against the Central Michigan guy. And we'll probably have either Hupp or Ellis in there again um at, at 133. And then against Cleveland State, Lou Lou will be able to um be our 133. 
141, we're going to do some wrestle offs. We're going to get our, the best guy. We're not going to pull, we're not going to pull Pablo out. Um, we're going to save him for next year. And we got some other guys. We're going to kind of wrestle off. See the best guys to take in that, the conference tournament, 141. Okay. But besides that, our lineup should be, should be hundred percent. Hopefully, uh, Enrique's feeling better. I, I, I threw him out there against SIU. He didn't wrestle well, didn't, didn't do a lot of things well. End of the day, he, he came back and said, I'm still not feeling the best. You, you wanted me to wrestle. I tried it. You know, we ended up not wrestling against Clarence, hopefully against uh, OU, which is a tough guy. He'll be ready to go. At Slivka, isn't it? Yep, Slivka. He beat him Slivka's once this pretty, year. Yeah, they split. Have they split, I think? No, Cody. He, no, they only wrestled one. Enrique beat him. Hagen, Hagen and Kamara split this year. Yeah, well, K Hagen beat him twice. So Hagen's Kamara's beat him twice. Gotta, okay. Kamara's got to beat him if he wants to. I, I, I think ultimately, if they both win two and we win the duel, I think we'll get the higher seed, is what the way it is in the, in the rule book, I think. Or it just could come down to ranking or whatnot. And they're pretty close. At the end of the day, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's a, it's a crazy weight class. Cody's never went in there ranked any or seed any higher than fifth. I was going to so say he was the fifth seed last year when he won it, right? Yeah, so you know like he's an old veteran. He'll know what to do to try to get to get, get to the national tournament. Okay, so uh, SIUE was Friday. They beat you seven matches to three. Two really close ones. Cody lives loses in overtime to one of the Tyus twins. Nap beat the other twin to start the match. Then the other Tyus knocks off Cody uh, in overtime. Uh, two close ones. Uh, Newell lost a, a two-one match. Yep. 33, or you had the only takedown in the match and you lost. That was a fresh, a true freshman. Yep. So, I mean, uh, 97, they dominated you. 84 was a nice win. Bates looked good. Yep. Um, 74, they dominated you. And 65, they pinned you. Can't yep. give up pins. No, and you can't give up pins. <laughs> Cannot get pinned. Oh. You cannot. For your team to have a chance, like a just a fighting chance to uh, be in the duel, you just you can't give up pinfalls. Yeah, I agree 100%. And Enrique I mean, knows that. And he just he wrestled horrible. He was sick all week and wanted to wrestle. We didn't think it mattered and it mattered. Yep, it mattered. And shout out, hey, this SIUE guy showed up, man. He came out and he wrestled really hard and took it right to Enrique. He took like it he to him, man. He beat him up and cradled yeah. him up and strapped him up and pinned him. And yep. that's what that's this is about showing up for every win. And, being be the guy, and that, that's that's what's tough about And I just don't know if people understand how tough Division One wrestling is. And people say things to me, and I get text messages, and I'm just <laughs> like, you have no idea. You have no idea. And it's like, I was in the Fenton situation where I just wanted it to be over, man. It was so tough. Didn't have any legs underneath me. And, and you know, that guy's a lot better than I ever was. So, I mean, I understand where a guy like that's coming from. This is hard. Yep. And uh, I just don't know if the, the populace at large understands that. The regular Joe Bag of Donuts, just, they just don't understand how tough Division One, Division Two wrestling's there. You know, it's a step below you guys, but those guys are laying it on the line. You know, there's D3, NAI, JUCO. I mean, college athletics in general are tough with the time management and everything. And I just don't know if a lot of people get that, Jim. Uh Buffalo, how'd you guys uh, fare against Buffalo uh, last? It was week? four matches of six, um, same type of match. We, you know, I think uh, we we only we had four freshmen starting, and they lost a lot of close matches. Um, actually, with five redshirt fresh or two freshmen wrestling. Um, Fair, uh, Ferry won, Cody won. Um, Thirty-five, forty-one. Uh, our 97 pounder upset the second ranked guy in the conference. Stouffer uh, had a nice win, huh? What's that? Stouffer had a nice win, or Schaefer had a nice Schaefer win. Schaefer had a nice win. Um, Sha as I call them Stouffer, Schaefer. Yeah, Schaefer had a nice win. Um, Keegan, Keegan at 157 took the, I, I want to say, I didn't realize it was him, but took the second or the first ranked guy in, in the match. Pettit? I think it's Pettit. Pettit. Yep, and uh, it was a it was a 12 to 11 match. <laughs> Wow. It was one of those are like I'm telling you, hey, things. that guy could qualify for the NCAs. Keegan Knapp, can, if he doesn't believe it now, I don't know if he's yeah. ever going to believe it, man, because he's got a nice stretch coming up with Central and OU where he's he got does. some big matches and he's got a, that's going to, we're going to find out where he is, man. We already know where he is. He gave Pettit all he could handle. Yeah. And 
Yep. He's right there, man. I like him. It's gas pedal. You know what? I was like, hey, man, you kind of faded there a little bit. He's like, I'm not going to lie to you. I was tired. I he was. Yeah, when you score 10 yeah. plus points every match, yeah. you're going to be tired. That's just, if you don't walk off a mat tired, then you're not doing your job at the end of the day. You're supposed to be walk off tired. This is, you know, leave everything out of the mat, which he does, man. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, if you got to crawl off or they drag you off, that's even better, right? That means you gave yeah. more. Yeah. So, okay, Buffalo beat you six matches to four. Before that, you were at the Virginia Duels. Um, who were your four opponents at the Virginia Duels? Campbell, South Dakota Cam- State, Navy. Virginia. Yeah, Virginia, okay. Yeah. Some tough opponents. Well, South Dakota State's ranked nationally. Virginia's ranked nationally. Um, Campbell beat Maryland. They beat Virginia. They beat a bunch of teams, and, and they, they, they've they been nationally ranked this year. And it's the same thing. It seems like we have, like, three or four wins in each one of those matches, but we lose. We don't have enough to win, we, or we get pinned or, or you know, big points in some of our weight classes that we aren't as, aren't doing as well, I guess you could say. Realistically, I went in there um, – and the first competition we wrestled against, Newell got hurt, Enrique got hurt. So they didn't like they didn't wrestle the rest of the time. So I had I had backups going from there. It, so it was you know at that point it was a little bit like it, we just had backups in, <laughs> and, and it seems like that's kind of where things started because we wrestled Northern Illinois. We went five and five against them. That was our match previous. If you look at Northern, they, they've got seven or eight wins, and we went you know we went five and five with them as far as dual me or in, in the duel. That's when we, that's the last time we had our full team that was with us. So I think that the goal now is just to get our full team. Um, Aaron Ferguson had surgery. He was our starting 57 pounder before Keegan Knapp took over. Um, you know, he, he was actually doing really well for us. Then he got hurt. So we just gave Keegan Knapp an opp- opportunity. But like I said, we're still technically with a backup at 157. Even though he's doing well for us, he's still technically a backup, if, if that makes sense. He wasn't a guy that we expected in our lineup. Um, so like I said, we're just right now, we've been piecing things together. Like I said, we're hoping that uh, that for Cleveland State, we'll have our full lineup moving forward for the last two duels, which is Cleveland State and Bloomsburg. And then for Central and OU, we're going to be like two guys short of our, our full team. You know, 33-41 will be a little bit hodgepodge just trying to get guys in there. So like I said, this is this has been, I don't want to say the hardest year because there's been some, like whenever we put in our, fresh, our, our true freshmen, we've had a lot of them wrestle they've wrestled really hard and they've like, there's some really good things to come out of it. And one of the things that we notice is that physically we aren't where we need to be as far as like you saw, you saw 133, you saw uh, Jacob help wrestle, help yesterday wrestle. Physically he didn't look as good as their guy at 133. So we just need to get bigger and stronger. We need to get some of these young guys stronger and to, they have to look the part ultimately, um, which, you know, we know next year, next year going into it, we're probably gonna have eight freshmen starting. So, you know, you have Enrique, um, Keegan Knapp, ultimately, he's a 49-pounder. We think he's going to go 49 next, next year, and Aaron Ferguson is going to come back. But Aaron Ferguson and, and uh, um, Aaron Ferguson and Enrique will probably be our only two older guys. Everyone else will be all freshmen next year. So it's going to be different next year. Even. i got to, I got to build the schedule a little different. i got to make sure that we're, we're giving our guys competition where they're winning and losing and trying to grow and get better and learning and, and staying positive. Because when you, when you start losing – Start losing a lot. It wears on you. It wears on everybody. Um, we didn't have any cupcake matches this year. If you look, we didn't schedule any bottom teams. We, and I, I wasn't worried about it because I thought going into it, we'd have eight seniors wrestling, which we don't anymore. <laughs> so I'm looking at it. UVA looks like it was uh, eight matches to two. Uh, yeah. South Dakota State looks like it was seven to three. Campbell looks like it was maybe seven to three. And then Navy, 27-21, did you split with them or was it six to four? It was six to four. Like I said, we, we had two backups in. Um, we had two backups in and the guy that should have been wrestling, wrestling. So it was just, like I said, we were, we didn't, Keegan Knapp wasn't wrestling. We had another kid in that was, because we didn't know, we didn't know uh, Ferguson's, if he was going to be able to make it back, but he isn't going to be able to make it back. So we didn't take Knapp. I wish we'd been able to take Knapp at that one because literally the, the Buffalo one was our next match. And that's when he started like, all right, we said, hey, you're going forward. You're going to be, you're going to wrestle in the conference tournament. We're moving forward with you. I wish we would have, could, have, could have taken him and gotten four matches at Virginia Duels. I think it would have helped him even more. So I'm looking, yeah, the, the Pettit match with Keegan Knapp was eight to five is what they have here on the, the box score. So um, coming down to stretch, will we see a rescheduling of the Edinburgh Duel? Because the way, the, the way their schedule is, no. And actually, the way ours is, we have the last week that we have nothing going on, so we could. 
but they are wrestling away. Uh, it's a road trip for them. So, and it's on a Saturday. So that kind of takes away Friday, kind of takes away Sunday. Um, so no, we're not going to, we're not rescheduling Buffalo. They're in the West. We're in the East. So technically we don't have to wrestle. If they were in the East and we were in the East or we were in the West, we have to wrestle. But since it's a crossover, we don't have to wrestle. Okay. So no crossover. Crossovers don't matter as far as the we championship. Need to have two. We already have two. We have Clary. Got we have it. They got, got it. Yeah. So we're good. Okay. So we will see you guys. The four left are Ohio U, Central Michigan, Cleveland State, and Bloom. I asked you yesterday, you don't seem worried about it, but do you think you can win one of those four duels? I think, you know, I keep saying if we can just get all our guys healthy and, and get get our full lineup in there, I think that we could, I think we could wrestle every single, we win every single match. I, I felt that going into Clarion that, that if we had all our guys, which we didn't, it would have been a good match. I think against SIU, if we have all our guys, I think we win the duel. Like I said, I can sit there and say that, but there's guys that we didn't, we aren't, we aren't having show up for our competitions. So, you know, it isn't like I'm saying that, that SIU is not good or that I just thought we had a better team. We just don't have all our guys healthy right now. And, and listen, part of staying healthy is a big part of division one athletics and everything. And we're the max schools aren't built very good as far as you start getting backups. I think OU right now they're struggling. They've got some backups in. I could tell you that, if OU has the same lineup that they had this weekend and we have our lineup that we have, it's going to be a, a really close duel just because I think their 33s out, their 57 hasn't wrestled, their 74 hasn't wrestled. So they got the same type of issues that we've had. So it's going to be a really close duel. Um, maybe all three of them come back and they have their starting lineup. I don't know where they're going to be. And I haven't talked to Joel. I don't think he's going to, you know, let me know that. I don't, I don't know if they have a podcast where they're talking about it like we do. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're gonna we're gonna drive there. We know who we have, and we're just gonna wrestle, and, and we're gonna get better. And that's the you know we're gonna hopefully wrestle better than we did against this week. And and I, I still believe that if we can get all our guys healthy, the way the MAC is built, you get two or three, four guys in the finals or or placing high, you're gonna be at the top of the, the team score at the end. So it's almost like the national tournament, because, but because we have 13 teams, and there isn't really a team that in the MAC that just sticks out yet and says, all right, they're gonna have four guys in the finals. Missouri's not there. Last year, Lock Haven had a lot of guys in the finals. Um, Lock Haven lost to Ryder. Ryder's lost to Clarion. So it's like everyone's beating everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, you, I, I think that I think you get Enrique in yesterday's lineup. You get Ferry Russell a little bit better. You, you get um, Noel down to 41. I think we give Clarion everything they have. So it's going to be a really interesting tournament. And we just have to stay positive during, you know, like I said, with all the injuries we've had and our guys have been working hard. It's just we've, been, we've had some little bit of bad luck, and we've had to use some really, really young guys that aren't weren't ready. But at the same sense, they're getting a lot of experience for next year. Like we got we have we've got guys that are going to be wrestling next year as, as redshirt freshmen. They're going to have five dual meets that they got or five matches that they got in, which that's never been done. So it's gonna it was a great year for it to happen because we would have had a we would have had a hell of a lot of forfeits this year if it didn't happen. And next year our guys would have been. They would have been green. We're now at least they have a little bit of experience under their belts. So this is wild to me. I'm looking at this right now. Central is four and eight. They are four and eight. And, they, you know, they wrestled Penn State, Oregon State, North Carolina. Clarion, they lost to Clarion 25-12. They beat Northern Illinois. They beat SIUE. Uh, they beat Duke. They lost to Bakersfield, lost to American, lost to Campbell, beat Ohio U. They got you guys, Buffalo. Michigan, Michigan State left, but like that, that's wild to me because I mean, I'm looking at their, their they lost to Clarion 25 12. Yep. You know what I mean? Like that, it looks like a six to four split or a seven three split, right? Like that's just tough, man. I don't think people understand how tough this is. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like I said, the, the, the conference isn't doing as well because we, I, I think we all believe that the, these six year guys are still floating around. We got another year or two of that, that, and you're really seeing like, if you remember 10 years ago when, when everyone had nine scholarships, there was no cost of attendance. There was no free cafeteria for school, for athletes. Name there image likeness, no, NIL deals, all of it. There was always three or four Mac teams in the top 25, you know, central us, OU, um, Northern, there were a few years that they, they were hitting the top 25. Then all of a sudden, you're allowed to cost of attendance, which literally took all the all the power five schools. They went from nine scholarships to right around 13 scholarships. 
Then they're allowed giving them cap. They, you're allowed having cafeterias again, athletic cafeterias, which means you can give a guy about a 60% scholarship. He can go to the cafeteria and eat for free, and it looks like a full ride. So now all of a sudden that gives them more money. Then they also have this Austin money, which it's about it's about you know 45 or up to six thousand dollars a year that kids can get. Then they can get NLI deals. So there's so much money out there for these Power Five schools that we just don't have. Hopefully, and I, I think everyone knows it's, it has to happen. Hopefully, there's got and like I said, you got you have college football players making more than they'd be able to make in their fourth year of an NFL contract as a as a fourth year player. I mean, you know that rookie contract they have to sign. There's there's guys making more money in college than there are in the NFL. Well, yeah. So at some point, the NCAA yeah. has to come back and do something. You know, and. and if not, it's just going to go out and get out of control. <laughs> it's really oh, going to yeah. get out of control. Well, then it just becomes bidding and the haves and the have nots. And yes. next thing you know, we're men's gymnastics and Division One wrestling's men's gymnastics. I yes. don't think people are heeding this cautionary tale. I talk about it all the time. Once again, I just don't know if people get it. They think <laughs> it's good. They think, oh, yeah, it's great. But then ultimately, if someone asked me, hey, are you going to cover Ohio State and Michigan State? And I'm like, I got Kent State in my backyard. I'm alum. I do their podcast. Why am I going to put four? I'm going to put five hours of driving on me. I'm going to miss all my kids' stuff to go there. They don't need me there. They got the Big Ten Network. They've got all these people who are lined up to cover them. Kent yeah. State doesn't have that. Clarion doesn't have that. And I just, once again, people just don't understand yeah. how how tough this is, what you guys are going through, what's Clarion, Cleveland State, Edinburgh, Lock Haven, the Mid-American Conference, Central Michigan, Northern, Ohio U, Joel Greenlee. I just don't people can really appreciate the position of Division One wrestling right now and, and how far the gap is widening between the Power Fives, the ACCs, Big 12s, 100%. Big 10. And it's just, it's just, it blows my mind and, I sit and I scream into the ether, but I don't know if anybody's hearing me or they just think I'm a lunatic. Pretty much what, what our, our, our world's done, or our country's done, or, or that they, they, they put no value on a, on a degree anymore, ultimately. Or a full scholarship, there's no value on that, if it's you really bizarre. think about it. It's bizarre. It, it's bizarre. You know, it's, it, like, it's like these guys, you got two Columbus guys on your team. Sure, they could go walk on and be guys that are room guys for Coach Ryan and Coach Jaggers and, you know, Steber and those guys and Jordan, but they want to go and have a shot at being in Tulsa, Oklahoma, yep. wearing another singlet. You know, they want to be in the tournament where there's only 10 people can start for Ohio State. Right. Only, right. Oh, the Penn State can only put 10 of those guys on the mat, that loaded yep. roster. And it's, you know, people got to sit, man. People people got to – sometimes you got to be a backup. But sometimes it's, it's better to have four shots at going to the NCAAs than one. Yep, I agree with you. I agree with you. So, yeah, that's just where I'm at. I'll keep fighting the good fight, Coach Anderson, but <laughs> I don't know if it's going to matter because people are so – the 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 big flagship universities, the Penn States, the Ohio States, the Michigan, Michigan States, Wisconsin, the brand that is the state, they're always going to have a ravenous following. They're always yeah. going to have unlimited support. And I, I don't want to fight that fight. I'm not, you know, saying you're bad. I, I'm just saying – we're talking about two different things hopefully, that, hopefully that, are in the, that are in the same division. Yeah. Hopefully the NCAA can get a handle on some of this, to be honest with you, and we can, we can reel, reel it back in so it, it, we all can be somewhat relative. Because right now, the smaller schools aren't very relative. That's all. It, it's, it's, there's unlimited scholarships now. Yeah. It's unlimited. If you have a, a – do you remember what BYU did? Yep. BYU put all of the walk-ons – they had a guy – that they had guys that owned businesses – and they put them all on a salary. Yep. They all gave, they gave them all like a 50, whatever it was. Yep. So everybody on BYU's football team was on a full ride. Yep. Well, oh, hold on. Then there was guys getting paid above paid. and beyond. Yeah. Same thing with the Texas Tech, I believe, football. They, they, yeah. they gave, everyone got 25,000 hours from the university. Everybody, plus a, plus a full ride. <laughs> so talk about, talk about de devaluing a degree, ultimately. Uh, so, all right, coach. You got it. We'll, we'll probably do this maybe three more times. Yeah. Think. Hey, do you think we sound like sour grapes or are we no, being and rational? We're just yeah. talking, man. Talking about the state of wrestling. That's what everyone wants here. Listen, if we don't tell them the truth, people will wonder what that what, what's going on, why it's like that. 
my brother is a, is a college sports junkie. He loves college football. Like he knows everything. He's amazed by it. He's amazed that he's so amazed with how much money that, that, that's getting given to kids and what programs are doing. And, and he know it, he knows it's trickling down to other sports. He follows it. So it's just, we're trying to make people, make people understand what we're doing because there's no NLI money. There's no cost of attendance money. There's no Alston lawsuit money. There's no grade point average money. We're dealing with nine point scholarships and that's it. That's it. <laughs> so How we're, trying to build a, we're, we're trying to build a wrestling room. That's, that's something hopefully we're trying to get down here still. Um, we got some guys that we're dealing with as far as fundraising that can really make an impact on our program um, just to get us things that, you know, at least facility wise, things like that will help. Hopefully I'll have some announcements coming in the near future with that. So there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of really good things. I think we're leading, leading the country again in uh, um, community service hours. As far as Kent State, we won't, we, we had the most community service hours last year as a wrestling program in the country. Um, last year we had the 18th best, uh, um, 18th best grade point average in the country. So like I said, we're doing a lot of things really, really well. Our guys stay out of trouble. They don't, you know, they're not causing havoc like a lot of wrestlers do. So we, we do a lot of things really, really good. And trust me, we're trying to, we're trying to, we're all trying to get better wrestling wise. It isn't like we're just not doing about it. We're working as hard as we can. Um, I, this, these guys work as hard as my guys worked back when we had the, the Kilgores and the Mitchups and the Bedleons on a team. We just aren't as talented right now. So, you know, I, I think our, our, our freshman class next year, next year, I wouldn't expect a whole lot of them, but by their second year, you know, we're adding a few guys that we think can help us um, by their, you know, by the, by, the following year, I think we'll have a really good young team that can make some noise, you know, and we'll go from there. That's all we can do. Coach, I like it. Now I have to go and research how many guys are going to take a pay cut, leaving college <laughs> football and going to the NFL. I, yes. I, I believe that. I'm sorry. I believe that. Maybe I'm naive, but I think there's guys who are going to take a pay cut or they'll get cut from NFL teams and your window is real short. Once you get cut, if you don't get picked up by someone pretty quick, you're out of the league and it's over in two years. Last year, there was a, when the NLI came out, there was a, a true freshman quarterback for Ohio State that's not even on the team anymore. He signed like a $2 million NLI deal and he's not even on the team anymore. That's crazy. And, and he got crazy. that last year as a, as a first year guy. Yeah. Well, coach, coach, we're out of time. We'll, out of time. we'll bring this up. Thank you for the time. Go Flashes. Good luck to you guys this weekend. Talk to you in 10 days, probably. <laughs>